Hello and welcome to this video. We're going to take a look at some of the secrets, easter eggs, references and things you might have missed in the civilization games. So let's not waste any time and get right into it. As a ground rule, to keep the setting of building up your civilization from the stone age to the modern era the same, we will only be looking at the numbered Civ games, namely Civ 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Furthermore, we will not be looking at any of the achievement references, which is a video for another time. There are not a lot of secrets in Civilization 1. The biggest one is Gandhi's integer overflow bug that makes him a bloodthirsty warmonger, which is explained brilliantly in the Soul Factories video. The only other reference worth mentioning in Civilization 1 is the portrayal of Elvis as an entertainer specialist. Keep this in mind as Elvis is a recurring reference included between Civ 1 and 4 in one way or another. Civ 2 also barely has any secrets or easter eggs. The only notable reference is the continued inclusion of Elvis as the cultural advisor delivering his lines with an amusing Elvis impression. A moment of your time, King. I got some troubles, King. Sith 3 and its expansion is when the secrets and easter eggs start to ramp up. Here's something you might have missed. Right at the start of the game, the intro cinematic in which the camera slowly pans up to a tower that's based on the Tower of Babel, there is a section that has an uncanny resemblance to the Disney castle. Pay particular attention to the architecture of these two towers, the section above the gate, the building and window above the wall, and the secondary square tower, and the similarities start to become apparent. The next easter egg is something that was well hidden by the developers. If you go into the art folder, then Civilopedia, then Icons, and scroll down, you'll see a PCX file that you can't open with an image editor, as it is corrupted. However, if you change it into a big file and place it in the Scenarios folder, it becomes a playable scenario in the game, named Other Stupidity. The map, however, is nothing but cows as far as the eye can see. All the regular resources have been replaced with cows and cow names. For example, gold becomes cash cow and whales becomes sea cow. This is confirmed by the developers as a reference to the secret Diablo 2 cow level. Once the game exhausts the names from the city list, it cycles through the city names once again, adding the word new as a prefix in front of it. However, if you're playing as the Japanese, instead of the city of New Tokyo, the name Neo Tokyo gets added, a reference to the setting of the famous manga Akira. The Ottomans also get a unique city name as they get not Constantinople instead of New Istanbul when the city names are recycled. This is a reference to the song Istanbul, not Constantinople, a 1953 novelty song written on the 500th anniversary of the fall of Byzantine Constantinople to the Turks. And three of the civilization's last cities are slight notes to the fan base. Greece's last city is Apoliton, which is a reference to the Sif Forum of the same name. The Aztec last city is Mincapulco, a cross between Acapulco, a modern Mexican city on the site of the old Aztec Empire, and Ming, one of the longtime Apoliton moderators. And lastly, the Scandinavians have Thunderfall as their last city, who is a Sif fanatic center admin. Playing on a specific date of the year triggers certain effects in game. Remember Elvis from Civ 1 and 2? Setting the time of year to his birthday, January the 8th, results in Elvis manifesting himself as the king in the regicide, mass regicide and capture the princess game modes. This isn't the only Elvis not in the game however, as if we take a peek into the main game credits file, there is a picture of an Elvis impersonator, one of which is displayed in the Play the World DLC credits if you wait long enough. Once you trigger the time specific Elvis easter egg, take a look at your Play the World Extras folder and you'll notice a new zip file called JMO, containing assets for a new unit that can be added into the game. This unit is confirmed by the developers as being a medieval style representation of C3 associate producer Jeff Morris. More hidden assets include the name of one of the developer's daughters, Amanda, in one of the forest textures, a hidden entry in the help section of the editor app added by developer Dan Magaha, the name Not You Either refers to a public Play the World beta tester, and a hidden security briefing that's never used in the Art Assets folder, reminiscent of the old Civilization 2 advisor videos. Impenetrable. There's absolutely no... Huh? Ah! On rare occasions, your advisors may say modified lines from famous movies as their advice. During my playthrough, I wasn't able to trigger any of them in-game as they are quite rare. However, if you look through the script text file, you are able to see all of them. The culture advisor may sometimes say, Culture is what gives our people power. It's created by all living things. It surrounds us and penetrates us. Which is a reference to Obi-Wan Kenobi's line from Star Wars referring to the Force. Now the Force is what gives the Jedi his powers. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us, penetrates us, it binds the galaxy together. 
Your science advisor may sometimes say, compared to you, most people have the IQ of a carrot, which is a reference to Professor Hathaway's lines in the movie Real Genius. Compared to you, most people have the IQ of a carrot. The foreign advisor may sometimes say, our civilization will always triumph, because enemy civilization is dumb, which is a reference to one of Dark Helmet's lines from Spaceballs. Now you see that evil will always triumph, because good is dumb. Once you acquired nukes, the military advisor may sometimes say, Good, bad, you're the one with the nukes, which is a reference to one of Ash's lines from Army of Darkness. Good, bad, I'm the guy with the gun. If you have a city in civil disorder, your domestic advisor may say, City in flames, films at 11, a reference to one of the new casters' lines in the Kentucky Fried movie. The popcorn you're eating has been pissed in. Film at 11. Your trade advisor may sometimes say, I'm not even supposed to be here today. A reference to the movie Clerks. I'm not even supposed to be here today! And lastly, there are two generic advisor messages, one of them being sleepies for the week when playing the game in the early hours, and the other being hail to the leader baby, a reference to Ash's line in Army of Darkness. Hail to the king, baby. To add to this, one of the rare AI war greetings is a small nod to that infamous badly translated Zero Wings quote. All your base are belong to us. The last two secret items are a hidden editor command that turns it into a psychedelic trip after you press the tilt key, and a Beatles reference in the Revolution message, which is taken from the lyrics of the Beatles song Revolution. C4 continues with plenty of secrets and easter eggs. Let's start off with the last Elvis reference to date in Civ games. If you take a look at the clothing of the great artist in the modern era, you see him dressed in the rock and roll legend's famous white garments. To add to this, take a look at the Wonder movie for the rock and roll project, and in the first few seconds you'll catch a glimpse of Elvis's face in the bottom of the paper. Next we're going to take a look at the secret civilizations that are in the game that you might not have played as. For this you need to go into your C4 folder, inside Assets, XML, Civilizations, and you need to edit the Civilization Infos file with the text editor. Find the following phrase, scroll down and change these values to a 1 instead of a 0. Now next time you play the game, you will get the Barbarians as a playable Civ, with Sid Meier himself as their leader. You only get one Barbarian unit however to try and conquer the world with, so if you want to be able to do more than that, you need to create a custom game from the main menu, select the Minor Barbarian setting, which will allow you to play as one of the Minor Barbarian Civilizations, being able to build new units, settle new cities, and research new techs. Talking about Sid Meier, his face along with Jeff Briggs is also on the intro cinematic for a few seconds on the bottom left hand side of the screen. Here's another developer who makes a cameo in the game. If you take a closer look at the modern era splash screen, you'll notice the Soren branded watch set at 523. This is a reference to Soren Johnson, the lead developer of C4, with his birthday being the 23rd of May. Now let's take a look at some hidden Phyrexis logos. You may have noticed the sale of the workboats looking familiar, but if you have good eyes, zooming in on the book of the monument building, you'll see another well-hidden Phyrexis logo. The media and pop culture references continue to have a presence, continuing on from the previous game. On denying your peace deal, Louis of France on rare occasions may do a good impersonation of the French taunters from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Ah, oh, blow my nose at you, so-called Arthur King! You and all your silly English niggas! Is there someone else up there we could talk to? No, now go away or I shall taunt you a second time! To add to this, if a leader is pleased with your own completion of a trade deal, they will sometimes call you a hero and profess their desire to be like you, a lyric from the 1988 song Wind Beneath My Mings by Bette Midler. Continuing on, you may have noticed a strange man on the icon of the internet project, who is none other than former Vice President Al Gore. You might be wondering why he of all people is on the icon as opposed to a picture of a computer for example. Well, it is an old myth that Al Gore claimed to have invented the internet, however the truth is far from it, as he was merely a vocal supporter of its importance. Another strange icon is found on the Civics page, as the grotesque man on the barbarism icon closely resembles Fat Bastard from the Austin Powers movies, looking like he just finished devouring a turkey leg. Oh... Who's your friend? Oh, I'd like to have a go with that filly. The last icon reference is found in the Final Frontier scenario from the Beyond the Sword DLC, where the tech for shock and awe bears the face of former US Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld, a central figure in the Iraqi war and the use of the shock and awe tactic. 
speaking about scenarios, if you manage to make it to the third stage of the defense scenario from Beyond the Sword, the text introducing the wave is a reference to the threat down segment of the Call Bear Report, more specifically the one referring to bears. And the number one threat facing America, bears! Once again, the threat is bears. Glass pop culture references are in the form of very rare tips when starting a new game. One of them is the phrase, never start a land war with Asia, a reference to the Princess Bride movie. The most famous is never get involved in a land war in Asia. The other being, never bring a sword to a gunfight, a reference to a famous scene from the Indiana Jones franchise. While you are waiting for those hints to appear, if you take a closer look at the new game cinematic from the base game, you will see a striking resemblance to the intro cinematic from Civ 1, with it almost being a shot-for-shot -shot recreation. This isn't the only callback to past Civ games however, other notable callbacks include the German cities playing a rendition of the Funeral March song from Civ 2, And the music being played when completing the theater is taken from Sid Meier's Pirates, specifically when dancing with the governor's daughter. In Civ 5, the secrets and references in the game take a backseat, as most of them now take the form of the newly introduced achievements. Nonetheless, there are still some things that can be explored. After you construct the Sydney Opera House wonder, keep an eye on the bottom right of the wonder cinematic and you'll see the familiar scene from the Lonely Island's I'm on a Boat music video. If you take a look at some of the leader backgrounds, you might notice a few odd things, such as Gustavus having a portrait of Maria Theresa of Austria in the background, or Washington having a painting of the Oracle wonder on his wall. Next, if you take a look at the giant death robot civilopedia description, there are mentions of the fate of humanity being decided by armies of good and evil mechs in the streets of downtown Tokyo, assuming the giant radioactive monsters don't get them first, which is most likely a reference to the cross between the Japanese Gundam sci-fi media and Godzilla, a famous Japanese giant monster awakened and empowered by nuclear radiation. Here's another thing you might have missed. If you zoom into the trading post or use a camera mod, you can see the words back off written on one of the buildings which is not exactly something you'd want with on a trading post. Flicking through the texture files, you can see a more clearer picture of it. And lastly, here's something that's in plain sight, but you definitely might not have noticed. Once the world's most literate list is completed, take a look at the name of the list and you'll notice an intentional misspell. And at last, we've arrived at Civ 6, the latest installment in the franchise, which has slightly more hidden things than Civ 5 did, some of which are also much more harder to find. Starting off with the terrain and buildings, take a look at the Great Barrier Reef the next time you play the game, and you'll notice a familiar duo of fish swimming around. This is a nod to Pixar's animated movie Finding Nemo, which features a similar clownfish and blue tank teaming up to track down Nemo's missing son, taken from his home on the Great Barrier Reef. Next time you play, also try zooming into the ski resorts and shaking the camera around vigorously to produce a cool snow globe-like effect. Keeping with the snow theme, if you zoom into the Amundsen Scott research station, you'll see tiny penguins waddling around in the snow. Once you construct the Broadway wonder, zoom in and take a closer look at the billboard and you'll see a familiar face of a sectoid from XCOM 2, a reference to the other popular game series developed by Firaxis. Zooming in and hovering over a holy site, you can hear the familiar sounds of the Civ 5 theme, Terra Nova. And the last two terrain specific references are found in the Red Death Battle Royale mode, where you can occasionally see a sunken Statue of Liberty, a reference to the famous Planet of the Apes scene. You maniac! You blew it up! Oh, damn you! God damn you all to hell! And upon winning the scenario, you will be evacuated with the colony ship from civilization beyond Earth.
There are more TV and movie references throughout the game. If you take a look at the neighborhood Civilopedia description, it says that Mr. Roger lives in an idealized neighborhood, as do Cookie Monster and Big Bird, both of which are referenced to the Mr. Rogers neighborhood and Sesame Street TV shows. To add to this, one of the quotes for the robotics tech is a reference to one of the most iconic movie lines spoken by Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie Terminator. I'll be back. The sanitation tech quote is lifted straight out of Monty Python and the Life of Brian. From the sanitation, the medicine, education, wine, public order, irrigation, road, the fresh water system and public health. What have the Romans ever done for us? While the Divine Rights Civic quote is taken from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Listen, strange women lying in ponds distributing swords is no basis for a system of government. Oh, but you can't expect to wield supreme executive power just because some watery tart threw a sword at you. Shut up! And leaving the best to last, there is a Phyrexis logo hidden on many of the Civ 6 leaders, some in very hard to find places. Try looking for these next time you load up a game. That's it for the video, if there's anything that I might have missed, let me know by leaving a comment down below, and if you enjoyed the video and learned something new, please leave a like.